Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you The Lady in the Red Hat, a suspense play starring Mr. Van Heflin. Suppressing the articles. Is there any doubt in your mind that this new murder was committed by the Avenger? No, mine either. So what? All right, I'll take you. Oh, hello, Mitch. Who's that, Chief Naylor? Yeah, they want us to stop those articles you're writing. No? What's the matter? Well, it's not so much the Avenger as the way you keep harping on those theories you've got about him. Well, I think I'm right. But you've got everyone in the city scared to death. That's why I want you to lay off. Five women have been murdered in three months, and they're all wearing red in their clothes. I say that means something, and they want me to lay off. Look, this isn't me. We hired you to do a feature column in a Sunday supplement because you've got a big following. Psychology of murder. It's a great idea, but... Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah? Mr. Banning, is Mr. Mitchell in there? Yeah? Will you tell him his housekeeper's on the phone? All right. the surgeon. All right, switch the call in here. Yes. Use this phone, Mitchell. Thanks. Hello? Yes, Mrs. White. Oh? Thank you. No, don't... Don't worry, that's all right. Yes, I won't be home until after midnight, then. Goodbye. Anything wrong? I don't know. I'll find out, though. An anonymous note slipped under my door. Somebody wants me to meet the Avenger... At midnight. In just a moment, Mr. Van Heflin in the first act of The Lady in the Red Hat. Say, Harlow, you ever play football? Oh, what a question to ask quarterback Wilcox, spark plug of the squad. The what? Spark plug. Why, as quarterback, I gave my boys tremendous enthusiasm. Just as new ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs give a motor with worn out spark plugs, Quick start, smooth performance, gas saving. Were you world famous? Well, no, half, but ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs are world famous for quality and dependability. You call the signals too, Harold? Of course, and our team clicks perfectly, just like Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are ignition engineered to work as a perfect team with your car's ignition system. Autolite spark plugs, you know, have fast, rugged laboratory and field tests to win selection as original factory equipment on millions of cars and trucks. So, friends, see your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer soon and have worn-out spark plugs replaced with new ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs for smooth performance, quick start, gas saving. And whether you choose the standard type or the resistor type, you can't buy better spark plugs for your car because you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the lady in the red hat and the performance of Mr. Van Heflin, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Good evening. Oh, hi, Miss. Well, I thought you were going to wait downstairs. Yeah, I was, but Danny wanted to see me. Naylor called in the police department wanted me to stop my articles. Oh, why? Well, I'll tell you while we're eating. Did they say anything about my stuff? No, no, yours is straight reporting. It's theorizing they object to. Maybe I'm getting too close. Have you written anything on last night's murder? I'd like to read it. I won't be writing it now, but if I did, I know what I'd say. Have you got something new, Nick? Something new? Maybe. I don't know yet. Meet the Avenger at 12 o'clock. And the Avenger could be anyone. Was she the one? This tall girl with long legs, smart, self-possessed career woman with fresh-faced innocence. We waited for the elevator. I watched. And she was there with me, a smile on her lips. We went to a place for dinner. You 
You know, Mitch, I love this place. My favorite hangout after work. That's why I brought you here. I was beginning to wonder why, why you've been so quiet. <laughs> the subdued lights and warmth, is that it? In a way. Oh? Something else, too? Mitch, what do you think about the Avengers? Oh, I think he's fantastic. Well, look, consider the name he... Well, or she has given himself, the Avenger. He probably wants to purge the world because of its sins. What about that nonsense about the color red? Well, that means something, perhaps. A sinful color, the obsession of red as a symbol, as a tie-up. That makes me a marked woman, doesn't it? You mean the, your star? Mm -hmm. You gave it to me, remember? That's right. I might be the man. Yes. Yeah. But why couldn't the Avenger be a woman? She could. What about Tate last night? The old woman. Why kill her? She wasn't pretty. She was just old. Rather obvious. She worked at the Follies. But she was only a scrub woman. But she worked there. Sinful. There you are. She carried a red purse, too. Listen, I, I want to tell you something. Something big. Even the editor doesn't know it. A story? The story. Oh, can I have another drink? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mario. I, um... I got an anonymous note this morning. Note? That's right. Yes, Miss Mitchell? Uh, oh, uh, you have to sing? Yes, please. And you, Miss Mitchell? No, nothing, thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, uh, when uh, Lieutenant Dow comes in, will you show him over here to this table, please? Yes, sir. Bill Dow? He's on the Avenger case. Mitch, are you holding out on me? You were speaking of a note, anonymous. Did it, um, did it say anything about the Avenger? Yes. Yes, it did. If I wanted important information about the Avenger, I was to go at midnight to the community chapel on 7th. It's such a, a lonely old building. And you got I, that I... note with you? Well, no, I left it at home. Oh? Did it tell you to sit in the first pew and wait? You got one, too. This afternoon, under my door at home, the housekeeper called. The same thing. It's queer, isn't it? I wonder... What? Oh, this isn't an ordinary tip, Mitch. Don't you see? I've been working on the story for the standard. You've been doing your series in the magazine section, Psychology of Murder. Now, supposing... The Avenger sent those notes? Well? Bill Dow called me earlier. He wanted to see me. Oh? I said that I was taking you out for dinner. I told him to meet us here. Why? The lieutenant claims that he received a note, like ours, too. Was she the one? Or was Dow? Millions of people in the city and the person next to you a killer. You couldn't believe it was someone you knew. Never anyone you knew, but maybe it was. Was that then the ultimate stimulation? Had it come to that? To kill a stranger was not enough. Now seek out the danger, the extreme risk. Because here was emotion, emotion of friendship. This was different. And who would it be? The girl on the newspaper? Or the policeman? Are you being stubborn because you're a policeman or because you're just pig-headed, Lieutenant? <laughs> you're a reporter. Too much imagination. I still think it's a crackpot gag. Then why did you come? Because Mitch and I have been working on this together. Because we're all friends. I'm not taking any chances. There have been five murders already. It should make sense, though, Bill. Three of us all vitally interested in the case. It, it'd be very flattering to him if we turned up at that chapel at midnight. Well, I'll be there. I can tell you that. I don't like it. You might be after one of us. Maybe you, Jeannie. Maybe he doesn't like some of the stuff you've been writing. Maybe me. Maybe. <laughs> or me. I'm the cop who's chasing him. <laughs> yeah, I don't imagine he's particularly fond of you, Bill. Why not surround the chapel? No. Mind you, I still think it's a crank note. But if it isn't, this baby's too smart. If he sees anything wrong, he'll get away. <laughs> I think Billy wants all the credit for a dramatic captain. Yeah. Oh, I'd have to share it with Mitch anyway. And me? Uh-uh. Oh, you're going home. That's what you think. I'm on that list. I want to be there when something happens. <laughs> Somehow, none 
none of us wanted to leave. Outside was the night, cold. Through the window and on the pavement, we could see a cover of snow. Snow, silent and clean. I thought of a knife flashing, and then the snow, soft, absorbent, no longer white, turning red until it spread over the entire city. The neon sign outside flashed red. 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 And at our table, it was warm and candlelit. Then we were outside, and the snow was falling. You know where the uh, chapel is, Bill? Yeah, it's the one on 7th, around the corner from the library. Funny, I must have passed that a hundred times. I never noticed it. Well, most people think it's vacant. It's not. In fact, it's open all night. How do you know, Jeannie? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I heard about it. Okay. We'll walk. I, uh, I always used to like the snow. I looked forward to it. I don't like it tonight. I've never liked it. There's something smothering about this stuff. I was in a blizzard once. What happened? I was lost in the woods up north, nearly froze to death. Snow kept coming down, got my mouth, my nose, my eyes. And after a while, things didn't look white anymore. They were blurred and uh, red. Which frightens you more, fear of being lost or or uh, fear of dying? <laughs> well, I don't know. Why? Just wondered. Uh... Has anybody got the time? Yeah, it's 11 o'clock. We stood outside the community chapel. It was on a side street. I, I remember the lamppost with its light, so much brighter than usual. Everything was white, but not beautiful. There was a murderer here. In all of this great city, the murderer stood looking up at a, ch a church spire. And who knew it? We went up the broad steps, slowly. Funny. What is? If one of us was killed here... side doors. All right. You stay here, huh? Yeah. The music's nice. There's the organist up there. See? Why are you looking at me like that? Was I? Yes. Why? Perhaps I was thinking how strange it would be if one of us were the Avenger. Van Heflin with Joan Banks and Joseph Kearns in The Lady in the Red Hat. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, did you have a good football coach? The most marvelous mentor going, Hap. He used to say, men, be alive, full of pep. Just like ignition engineered auto light spark plug. Yeah, what a man. Yeah, I used to say, give me teamwork. Just like the teamwork of ignition engineered auto light spark plugs with the coil, distributor, and all the other important parts of your car's ignition system. He was right, too. Because auto light spark plugs are the spark plugs designed by auto light engineers who design complete ignition systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of America's finest cars. That's why you can't buy better spark plugs for your car than Autolite. Ah, swell, Wilcox, swell. But um, let's get back to the coach. The coach? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, whether you have a coach, sedan, or coupe, let your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. 
And whether you choose the standard type or resistor type, you can be sure you're always right with Autolite. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood sound stage Mr. Van Heflin in Elliot Lewis's production of The Lady in the Red Hat, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Cock Robin, the Avenger, and who be Cock Robin? One of us, the Avenger. Oh, Ned! It has to be someone. Why, well, I believe you're serious. I am. We've all been on this case since the first death. Perhaps one of us enjoys the publicity, the thrill of killing. I don't like this place. Better go home. Oh, please. Get his gin. What did you find, Bill? One side exit, that's all. We can see it from the front pew. And what's the time? About quarter past eleven. Oh, I'm cold. I wonder if we could get some coffee. I'll get it. You two stay here. How do you like yours? Oh, black, please. The same, Bill. Right. Take it easy, Jeannie. It's not twelve yet. You want to sit down? Up in the front? No, not yet. Uh, here. Hmm? Nick, you aren't serious, are you? Yes. You read my articles. I've theorized about the Avenger. The analysis could fit any one of us. Me? Why not? You're fairly strong. You could have done it. But the victims have all been women. Why should I kill a woman? You like excitement, danger. Your favorite color is red. Your, your scarf, for instance. I don't. <laughs> you, you afraid to be touched? Well, no. I... You like men, but you don't like them to touch you. You like me. That but... doesn't mean. Ah, uh-huh. I'm right, aren't I? Now, now think of the five dead women. All of them, in some way concerned with what the Avenger considers sinful. It could be you. Or you. Or Bill. Dow. I've thought about him. He had a... There's a lot of reason to kill. Did you know that he had a wife once he ran away with another man? No. Perhaps he doesn't like women very much now. And it wouldn't be difficult for him to kill and get away with it. Easier than for most people because he, he's a policeman. And uh, you? Perhaps I'm in love, in love with a girl that I can never have. Because of that, I hate all women. Funny, I never thought of you as in love. Why not? Because you're so... So... I don't know. No. You don't know. We sat alone with the music. It was everywhere in the chapel, solemn, accusing. The thoughts had been spoken. Fear was creating suspicion. And the girl with the red star tied about her head, sitting with folded hands beside me, looked in front of her, and her eyes were on the front pew. Sorry I was so long. Anything happened? No. Oh, Jeannie? Oh, thanks. Seems wrong drinking coffee in a chapel. Sinful, Jim. Oh, stop it. That's not what I meant. Hey, Mitch. Thanks. Uh, what's the time, Bill? 11.30. Is that all? Oh, I see our friend at the organ still there. Yeah. Funny hour to practice. Mitch. Hmm? I heard what you said to Jeannie before. I mean, about one of us being the Avenger. Were you kidding? No. It's crazy. Why? It's got to be somebody. 
Why not one of us? Oh, he's got brilliant reasons. Ask him. We all fit. Not a joke anymore, Mitch. I know. The trouble with you, Bill, is that you think you have to look for some poor devil frothing at the mouth with his hands covered with blood. Mr. the murder always look like a comic book conception of a murder? Cut it out. You're not funny. I'm not trying to be. I think it more than probable that one of us could be the Avenger. We're normal, moderately attractive people, but one of us thinks differently. Which one? <laughs> You're a nut, maybe. We drank our coffee. There was an animal awareness now, each of us watching the other, cautious, wondering. We spoke of Christmas, failing next year's dodges. We spoke of everything but the adventure. And of 12 o'clock. Hey. Hmm. What? When did the organist leave? I don't know. The light. There's only one up there. You must have turned the others out. Be hard to see anybody coming in from the front pew. Well, well, I'm going to take a look. See if he's still around. No. <laughs> You're not afraid to be alone with me, are you? Don't be an idiot. If anyone comes in, stay in the shadows. It's nearly 12. Might as well get in your places. I'll be right back. Front pew. Yes, those were the instructions. It's quiet without music. Too quiet. It was nice. There were so many shadows. Shadows in a chapel? Well, that shouldn't be frightening. Will Bill be able to see us when he comes back? I think so. Do you think it's him? Do you? What's the time? It's about three minutes to. I hope he finds the lights. I don't mind it. Strange. What? When I was very young, I was in a place like this. Very much like this. Oh? I was taken every week, and every week there was a woman who sat across the aisle. She was beautiful. I was in love with her. Nobody ever talked to her. My mother hated her, but not my father. Do you know what I found out? No. It was after my father left us. He had been in love with that woman all that time. They ran away together. How terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so at the time. What tiny things one remembers. She always wore a red hat. She was beautiful. But she must have been very wicked. A red hat. Where I lived, they used to say that it was the shock of his leaving that killed my mother. <laughs> Poor Jeannie. Give me a hand, Jeannie. No, no. He is cold. No, please don't. You like her. You look like her. You even wear red. Because that's your favorite color. Mitch. Mitch. I'm in love with you. And it's so wrong. I've been in love with you ever since I met you. But it's wrong. You're bad. You're like her. Uh, Don't scream. Don't. Mitch, Mitch, it's all right. I understand. I'm sorry that music stopped. We've got to have music. There was always the organ playing at home. Come along, Jeannie. Where are we going? Upstairs to the organ loft. Now, don't, don't. Don't scream, please. Don't say anything. Don't. I won't. I won't, Mitch. You're not well. I'm glad you told me. I love you, too. You must believe me. I love you. Mitch, please. She was a clever devil. Trying to win me over with talk of love. I wasn't going to take any chances with her. We went up the narrow steps to where the organ was. I closed the door behind it. I didn't need my knife. I could smash her with my hand. Smash her. Pound the evil flat. Stamp it out on the floor. 
The other five were bad. They'd sin, but she... She was like that woman at home, the woman in the red hat. I knew what had to be done with her. I'd known that from the day that I'd met her. Tall with long legs, fresh face, masking wickedness. Please, please. Stay down there, Bill. Don't don't come up. I've got her. You stay there. I found her out. I've known her all the time. She's got to die. You know that, Bill. I'm coming up, Miss. It's okay. We'll take her in together. That's why I sent those notes, Bill. I I had to trap her. You understand? Sure. Sure. I, I'm I'm right, aren't I? It's dead right, Miss. Open the door. We'll take her in together. No, stay stay out there, Bill. I don't need your help. I can do it. Mitch, Mitch is sick. But it, it's all right. I'll make you better because I love you. You turn this thing on. Let's see a switch. No, no, don't, don't, don't go near that door, Jean. Mitch, open the door. Here's one. Mitch, open it. A minute. Don't worry, she won't hurt me. Not anymore. Mitch, please. Whatever I've done to you, I'm sorry. You're the woman. You're always the woman in red, but not anymore. I'll be all right now. Clay, there has to be music. There was music at home, at my mother's funeral. Clay. I, I can't. Play it. I don't know how to. Play! Louder. Louder, louder! Louder! Please! Drop my knife. Drop it. by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Van Heflin. Hey, Wilcox, any standouts on your team? Why, yes, Hap, more than 400 of them. 400? Sure, the more than 400 products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of America's finest cars. Coils, distributors, generators, voltage regulators, starting motors, wire and cable, and electric windshield wipers. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts, at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Ray Milland as star of After the Movies. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Alan Ladd, Dennis Day, and Cornell Wilde, all appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Lady in the Red Hat was written by Clark Daly and was adapted for Suspense by Anthony Ellis. Van Heflin can soon be seen in Universal International's Technicolor production, Tomahawk, co-starring Yvonne DiCarlo. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Ray Milland in After the Movies. You can buy world-famous Autolite Brazil for standard-type spark plugs, Autolite Safeful Batteries, Autolite Electrical Parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. The familiar kettle bells are starting to ring on the street corners of America. The Salvation Army again appeals for your help. Make this Christmas a merry one for the unfortunate. Contribute to the charitable work of the Salvation Army. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 